Welcome to our adventure in learning to build Flutter applications. We're going to show you how to generate hundreds of test images over the network. This is part six of our video tutorial series where we're going to generate the URL list for a set of images on the network. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, there are five previous videos on this playlist. The playlist also has the GitHub repository for the completed tutorial. You do not need a camera to follow the tutorial. We're going to generate the URL list of images from a free network site called LoraPixum. If you do have a camera, we will separate out this method so that you can switch between having a camera and generating the URL list from the camera and not having a camera and getting the test images from LoraPixum. Even if you do have a camera, it's good to use this LoraPixum site for test images. It may be more convenient for your testing. When the basic layout of the application is working, you can then pull the images from the camera instead. Up to this stage, we've grouped our code into GUI, local storage, and notifiers. Create a new folder called network. Within network, create a new file called get URL list. Within the new file, create a new function called, also called get URL list. And we're going to put some test code in there to make sure that it's working. Put a print statement in the method to show that we're getting the URL list. We can then hook up this function to the button to test to make sure that the button can access this specific function. In the get image button dot dart file, run the function and print out the contents. You need to import the file unless your editor, such as VS Code, automatically will import the method. Note that in this example, VS Code is automatically putting the import statement at the top of my file. The test function is not returning anything yet, so just run the function and uh, without printing out the contents. Run the app and press the Get Images button to make sure that all the different functions within that, that bit of code are working. After verifying that the button can reach the new function, let's go back to that file, get URL list.dart, and then convert it into a class so that we can have the two methods in there. One will be pulling the information from this test server, Lorem Pixum, and the other one will be getting it directly from the camera. For this simple application, we can use static methods, so the static keyword will allow us to access that method without having to instantiate the class. We're just using the class to hold the two different methods. One is going to be called pixum, and the other one will be called theta. Initially, we'll just have it print out uh, some type of test message. The methods will be slightly different because the to keep it simple, the one for the pixum, we're just going to generate the URL list from a set of basically a string. For the theta, we're actually going to have to pull it from the camera. For that reason, it's a little simpler to use the uh, lorem pixum to start with. Go back to the get image button and access the static method pixum. There's different ways to pull lists of images from pixum. The simplest way is to use a static random image. We're going to change the seed in a for loop. As we're using the images just primarily for the layout of the image and to see if it can pull it from a network, uh, we're just going to run it through a for loop and then the, the string after the word seed in the URL, that will be the variable that changes. That will, that will enable it to create separate images at random. We're going to start with five images, but you could put any number. You could put 100. It might be better to start off with a lower number first to make sure your application works. For both the camera and for this test site, I'm going to store the URLs as a list of strings into a new array. We're going to create an empty array or empty list to store the string for each specific image. So in this case, I'm just going through a loop. Um, so it's going to be incremental. It's not actually a random number. And then we're going to use that as the seed for the image. 
So theoretically, the images should be different. We use the same technique for the actual camera. So if you have a Ricoh Theta, we'll also will output a list of the URLs that would be on the camera and that will be sent to the rest of our, our application. With this technique, our application can receive that URL list and that URL list of images could either be on a remote network server or it could be on the camera. And, and then our code can just run without any other modifications. To put a variable inside of a string in Dart, you just put a dollar sign in front of the variable name. So to make this thing a string, I'm gonna put it in single quotes. So then the URL becomes a string. Uh, and then for that word pixel, that's the thing that changes to make the URL unique. I'm gonna replace pixel with dollar sign i, and i is the variable that's in the for loop that is changing. As a first step, we'll just print out the list to make sure that our list does contain the URLs for the images. After we see the images or the, the URLs for the images in the debug console, we can use control click on the URL itself and then see whether the image comes up in a web browser. So use control click, just pick one at random and say, okay, so it should come up in the browser. So we can now verify that our list of URLs does contain actual network images. It works. The Ricoh Theta images are in an aspect ratio of two to one. So let's say that it's maybe 800 pixels wide and 400 pixels tall, the height. This will give us the same layout as, for example, the Z1 images are 6720 by 3360. It's just in a two to one aspect ratio. And we'll now have a fairly close approximation of a Ricoh Theta image. If you're dealing with the Z1, you can see the image sizes here on the main page. If you go down to the specifications portion, scroll down, uh, the image resolution is 6720 by 3360. It's in a two to one aspect ratio. So all the images from all the different cameras are in the same two to one aspect ratio. The images are somewhat difficult to test with when you're building your application because let's say for the Z1, you're looking at a seven, eight, possibly even larger megabyte file per image. And this is just with the JPEG images. I'm not dealing with the DNG images for this test. So if you have 100 or 500 images of this size, the download may take quite a long time from the camera. So let's compare it to Lorem Pixum here, where I just downloaded 100 images rather quickly. And looking at the properties, uh, one, one image at 800 pixels by 400 pixels is 64K. So much faster to do the testing uh, with this. And it's the same aspect ratio. So you can get the layout of the images for your app and do the testing and then transfer it over to the, the Z1 or the SC2 for your testing. Let's go back to our class that we're going to use to generate both the URL list from the test server as well as from the camera. And let's actually start having it return a list. It'll be a, a list of strings uh, for the lorem pixum. For the theta, eventually we're going to have to return a, a future uh, list of strings. But for now, we'll just initially set it to return a list of strings. This way we can modularize the bit of code that is generating this list of URLs. And then we can feed that into another uh, piece of code that will then actually download the images from the network. So the abstraction level that we've decided on is the uh, level of a URL list. And the application won't care if it's actually coming from the camera or actually coming from the test server. So we're using the function that is attached to the get button on press the callback uh, get image button to control the, the flow of the program right now because the program is fairly simple. 
So we're going to have to assign this to a variable because we're going to need to pass the variable into another function that we're going to create soon to actually download the images from the network. Our strategy here is to separate out the creation of the URL list of images from the download of the each uh, image. By separating out this way, it makes it easier to set up error checking uh, in the future. And we can do various types of tests on that URL, URL list. This will become more important in the future when we actually get the list from the camera. For now, we're just going to test to make sure that we can generate a URL list of images to work with. Fantastic. It works. Congratulations. We're well on our way to finishing our application. There's actually only two more steps left. Since we've already have this URL list and we verify with a browser that it is an actual image URL, all we need to do is use an HTTP get from the Flutter package and download the image into our system memory. Once it's in our system memory, we can then save the file. We've already, in a previous video, figured out where to what the path is for the Windows Pictures folder. So we're just going to create a subfolder within there automatically with the program and then save the file as bytes to our local storage. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you like this type of video, give this video a like and we'll use the feedback to plan what we produce in the future. Subscribe to this channel and when we produce the next tutorial, you'll get a notification that there's another great tutorial out. Hey, have a fantastic day and congratulations again on getting this far in your journey with Flutter.